All right, what's up guys? Kenny from Bobble Strength and welcome to episode three of Making Mark, where I go around and meet special people who are following their passion and you're doing something special for the community. Uh, today we're heading over to uh, PB Physio and we're gonna meet up with a really special physio here. Uh, her name's Julia and she specializes in women's health. So this week is Women's Health Week. So, you know, it's very important that we uh, talk about this issue and, you know, Julia's gonna go through um, the importance of uh, women's health. All right, let's head through. We're inside, we're in PB Physio. Uh, here's Julia, she's the uh, also known as the Physique Physio. She's a pro swimsuit um, model. Uh, she specializes in women's health and because it's Women's Health Week, you know, we're gonna do some special content around your women's health and she's gonna talk about um, all the ins and outs about the, um, the downsides. Yep. All right guys, so now we're in a private room because we're gonna talk about some sensitive topics. Uh, for the dudes out there, definitely stay for this because you know I've already just spoke with Julia and I've learned so much already. And you know, we're going to talk about all the uh, women's health stuff. And you know, Julia, introduce yourself. Yeah. Hi guys. So my name is Julia. I'm a women's health physiotherapist and musculoskeletal physiotherapist. I started off as a personal trainer, um, teaching classes. Um, it, this area actually was something that I didn't know anything about. Even throughout uni, doing masters of physio, I still probably had maybe like two lectures about women's health and I still had no idea um, until I started treating. So first year um, into physiotherapy, into musculoskeletal physio, um, I was treating a lot of mothers um, in Bankstown area and yeah. um, they just like, they were coming in with a lot of low back pain. Uh, hip pain, low back pain, yeah. and I was just I was trying to figure out like how I can get them to exercise. Like I tried so many different ways, and there was one uh, woman in particular who like I really wanted to help her, right? And um, I was like, you know, you have kids, like you take them swimming every Saturday. Why don't you go swim as well, you know, with them? Yeah. And she was like, you know what, Julia, like I can't. And I'm like, why not? And she's, I thought it was because she didn't know how to swim, right? But it was actually because she was like, you know, every time I go to the pool, I actually pee myself. And I was like, what? Like, is yeah. this something? So yeah, at the time, like I went to my supervisor and I'm like, this is what the lady said. And she's like, yeah, like it happens. Like it's actually very common. And I was still doing personal training at that time. Yeah. Too, and I was teaching classes, like all the hit classes, making them do like <laughs> burpees and like star jumps and there was another lady who was like no i, I can't do, I do that, yeah. that and i'm like okay like this is and she kind of like pointed down here yeah. and, and that's when i looked into it and then i started actually doing um further courses like more research into it and then i started my first uh, women's health course and that's kind of how it started yeah. <laughs> so um why are you so passionate about women's health yeah like as a, overall as a, you want to be a, a specialist in because I definitely see that it's been missed. So, I mean, considering I did my Cert 3, Cert 4, I did my group exercise course, I did, yeah, Bachelor of Health Science and Masters of Physiotherapy, and yeah. I still, first year out, I had no idea, yeah. you know? And so I feel like it's something that I know now, it's something that I've, like, really delved into. So I feel like it's my, um, kind of, it's onus on me now to actually do something about it. Um, a massive thing also is that I love like powerlifting. Yeah. And I'm getting into weightlifting now. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna oh. teach me the ways he's the master of it. All right. All right. Machine. Alright, initially I was like, okay, it happens to older women. It happens when you when you've had kids. But then now I'm like, okay, it's actually happening to 18 year olds. It's happening happening to like younger what, young girls are just Yes, yeah, younger girls, athletes particularly, will experience incontinence as well. Yeah. And the thing is like I've just seen how much it impacts them. Like emotionally. As soon as they start to experience it, they'll stop Stop training. What yeah. causes it? Yeah, and that's like exercise. You know, who can they really turn to yeah. for this type of stuff? There's actually so much more information now. We're all really lucky because of social media. Yeah. Because yeah, it's it's definitely talked about a lot more. So, um, what if my wife or girlfriend, you know, is suffering from this? You know, what can I do as a guy to help out? Really, so for as a partner, but also as coaches and PTs, as male coaches and PTs, I um, think number one is like listening to what they have to say if they do bring it up. Number two is being like not. Um, feeling awkward about it yourself and knowing that it is actually a common issue um, there's nothing wrong with them but then yeah. going about it together you know finding ways um, to actually improve it and like help 
in, in the process yeah. of it because it's actually really like emotionally like difficult for, for women to deal with that too. Alright, so um, what are some of the tools or what, what's the um, so, sort of test that you do with the uh, ladies that come through mm -hmm. and um, and how you diagnose of what they've uh, got down there? Mm -hmm. I think we might like even start off with what the the anatomy of it just really briefly. So this is our pelvis here. So we, our pelvis actually does sit slightly in a bit of an anterior pelvic tilt, okay? Um, we have our pubic bone here at the front. So if you, I mean, you can, you've got it too. So if yeah. you feel right there, it's that hard bone there. You have um, your sacrum, so lower back sacrum and coccyx at the bottom. Um, and if we look underneath, we have the clitoris here at the top, we have the urethra where it attaches to the bladder where we urinate from. We have the vagina, which attaches to the uterus. And then we also have the anus here, yeah, which attaches to the rectum. So the guys, guys also have pelvic floor muscles um, and there are men's health physiotherapists too. If we look at it side on, again, so this is us looking at it this way, pubic bone here at the front, we have the bladder here, yeah? And then the urethra, where we urinate from. We have the uterus here, so this is where the baby grows. And also when we go through menstruation as well, like this is where it all happens. And then vagina passageway, muscular passageway. Um, and then we have the, well, the rectum here and then down into the anus, yeah? And then lower back, coccyx. So number one, it's really important to understand that. This is why a lot of power lifters as well, like when they brace and they have a belt, Imagine all that pressure, pressure there. Yeah. yeah. So the bladder. And yeah, yeah. Exactly. And when people have babies, when uh, women have babies, that's oh, why they. Push yeah. Them. So it's like expanded through here, increased intra-abdominal pressure, downward pressure onto the bladder. Also, another reason why it's very important to see like dietitian, like a good dietitian, yeah. because if there's um, issues of the stomach, and intestine, and there's inflammation, whatever that brings less like reduces the space or irritates that area that can cause pelvic floor issues too. Yeah. So diet's very important. Yeah, well. it is. Yeah, it is very. Um, yeah, so pelvic floor muscles attach from the front of the pubic bone to the back of the coccyx, yeah? And then it attaches from our, oh, oh broken, uh, our sit bones, so yeah. like our ischial bones side to side. Um, and yeah, so it acts to close, so closes through the front, closes through the back, and it also helps to lift. So that lifting motion is what we want as well, yeah? yeah? That's the anatomy. So I always want to go through the anatomy for people to understand because the only way that I can know what's going on is if I do an internal assessment. And that's probably the most daunting part yeah. is that, yeah? Well, can we go through this one first? This one's heavy, whoa, <laughs> whoa. So what is this? This is gonna like knock someone. <laughs> it could, it's actually, yeah. it is quite heavy. It's called a pelvic bar and this is something that I would only use like later stages yeah. and only particular only athletes. Strong, yeah? yeah, only yeah. particular athletes. If like obviously someone who's starting to lift heavier, their weights go up and they yeah. start to get stronger everywhere else. Yeah. But then like, you know, yeah, if they let the yeah. pelvic floor, it's still a muscle. Um, so it, it depends. Like, it's not something that I commonly use, but it's something that yeah, some of my athletes have used, like lifters have used, yeah. Um, it depends on the um, kind of... It's pretty big. It is. So it yeah. starts off from the bigger side, you start off from lying down, yeah. and then you gradually build your way up and down because it, it's harder to hold at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. Damn. We also have another one that we use, and I use this more for people endurance-wise. So This one? Yeah. So, this, by endurance. so, so some um, women who struggle, like, to hold their pelvic floor. So for example, they're trying to find a toilet and they can't find it for oh, ages. Yeah, yeah. And, and then they, they use, hold, yeah. it's more like, so similar as a runner, like a runner, we will so work for endurance. How, how, how long do you hold? Yeah, okay. So, and a lot of mums find it really hard to just lie down and do it. So firstly, motor patterning is number one. I have to make sure they can do it first. But then as a progression, these are called the aqua um, cones, they're cones. And so if you open it up, it has this little thing here, so and it's like five oh. grams, five grams and up. Uh, that's twenty grams. Do the ladies feel happy when they do a PB? Or do they keep adding weight. Like, they yes. do, yeah? because you know what? A lot of is especially postnatally. Yeah. Um, when they come in, they actually can't. A lot of them can't connect with their pelvic floor because yeah. there's you know been tearing a bit of damage as well yeah. and so the fact that they are They'll able to progress, yeah. yeah, it's really just like gym, exactly just like, gym, like yeah. that. Yeah. 
So um, yeah, that's something that helps to track objectively as well that they're yeah. improving. Yeah. Um, the other thing, so in terms of that's like more strengthening. There are so many other things that we yeah. use as well. In terms of assessment, um, so. Uh, firstly, the main, the most like kind of accurate is like my feel, like how I feel inside. Awesome. Even though the pelvic floor muscles, people think it's one. There was actually actually so many. Actually, if you see here, there's um, different muscles that attach from there. So it's not just one muscle. Yeah. These are all the pelvic floor muscles. So uh, for me, like I have to see one side might be tighter than the other side. Yeah. And that can also correlate to hip issues too. Yeah. Uh, this is called the Paratron. Yeah. Um, the only issue with this, like you can't just use this because it doesn't show you like if they're properly lifting. Sometimes they could just be it squeezing. Just the, just the, size, yeah, it's yeah, the, the pressure. Walls, the walls, yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, number one, the internal assessment is most accurate, right? Yeah. Um, so pretty much what I'll do number one, um, we'll put a condom over the top yeah. in and Assess, assess their resting pressure. So yeah. what's the initial breathing, tightness yeah. and tone? Yeah, breathing, relaxing, can they relax? Yeah. That's one thing that's super important is that their yeah. ability to relax and let go. Because if we were doing like a bicep curl yeah. and we just did this all the time, it's, like, tiring, yeah. it's tiring and it's gonna be weak as too yeah. and it's gonna get really sore. So we wanna make sure that they can lengthen, let go and lift yeah. too. Yeah, you squeeze yeah. it. And it'll come from four. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so you do that yeah. for about 30 on average, is, is fine. Yeah. Are they a sumo or <laughs> conventional uh, lifters? Um, I don't know. Would be interesting, yeah? It would be interesting to know. <laughs> Why? Well, it's yeah, actually that, harder. Yeah, or like that, you know, which yeah, is yeah. uh, strong for the public floor. That's well, it's something to research. It's been a bit of mix. Bit of mix. But it'd be good to have more yeah. research on lifters. Yeah. That's that. There's also for people who have pelvic pain. Um, ways to do like self-release. So this is called a vaginal dilator, medical grade. It helps to, it, it depends. It's certain ways where we kind of focus on like doing a uh, release work around if they're experiencing pain with sex. Again, different sizes, different types as well. So they can um, work up to a big yeah, size. Yeah, exactly. So it might be like really small first to start with. It might be just their finger. What's the smallest size that it comes in? Um, this one, oh, there's the heap smaller, so. Oh wow, that's, that's, that's tiny. So yeah. this is probably one of the biggest ones. That's, the, that's yeah. the biggest one. Yeah. yeah okay. But um, yeah, but you can start off with just their finger. Um, start off with their partner can help them with it if that's yeah. what you said before about, you know, just helping. Pick in first and then yeah. work up. Gradually. That's why full play is important. Yeah. <laughs> you got to warm them up. Yeah, no, seriously. Yeah. All right, thanks Jules for that. You know, we've learnt so much. I uh, hope you guys learned a lot as well. And remember, this week is Women's Week, so if you know someone that's suffering, uh, make sure, you know, how can they come see if they want to get some treatment? So you can book in online, you can find us, uh, find me on PB Physiotherapy, um, I'm in Marathon. And uh, you can always message me too, I'm always happy to answer people's questions and refer them to other women's health physios that I know in Sydney or even in Melbourne, Brisbane, wherever. But let me know and I can actually guide you to the right person closest to you. Yep, uh, what's yeah. your Instagram um, handle? A physique Physio, yep. yep. <laughs> so you can find me on there too. Yep, all right guys, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, remember to hit the subscribe button below, hit the notification bell, and make sure to visit our website at bulbstrength.com and grab yourself a squat sensei. All right guys, peace.